Welcome to Everton.com. Today we're going to take a look at a keyboard. This keyboard right here is a unique little device from a company called Voamoc or uh, Voamoco. I'm not sure how to pro properly pronounce it, so you have to pardon me on that. But as you can see here, it is actually a rather unique keyboard because it actually has a touch screen built on the side here as well as a uh, combination of things here. A speaker as well as a uh, kind of like a function toggle on this side over here. So let's go and hook this up and give it a try and see what it's like. Okay, so upon unboxing the keyboard, uh, you have the keyboard itself and a really nice nylon braided right angle USB-C adapter, which is really nice because you normally you don't get a nice cable like this. You usually kind of throw a junky cable in there. So this is actually a nice refreshing thing to, to have a nice cable. You also get a thank you card and actually the, there is an extended two year warranty, which is really nice as well. And then the instruction manual, a nice color instruction manual that tells you what to do. Uh, there is some software you'll have to get to, uh, to use it. There's uh, their Icon Sync software, so you'll have to go to the website, grab it, and install it. All right, so let's take a look at the keyboard here. So we have here the touchscreen side of it here, and then we have a speaker here, and we have a, sort of a status uh, area here, so it shows which kind of mode you're in. Now, this is not a, a jog wheel. It looks like a jog wheel, and I wish it actually was, it's, but it's not. So it's actually more of a four-directional uh, function uh, button, as well as a middle button to bring back to the home. It actually controls what happens on this side. All right, so the keyboard itself here, the, the body is, bottom part of it is, is a, Nice metal sheet here, so, it's nice, so it gives a nice hefty feel. You have a little rubber feet on the side here. And then uh, the body itself is plastic, okay? But it's kind of a glossy plastic, so, so it actually feels kind of nice. Kind of a premium feel to it. Uh, the keys are scissor keys, so scissor style keys. So it feels kind of like an Apple keyboard, and it kind of looks that way as well. And then uh, on here, you can see that this is where uh, the USB-C connector is for plugging it into the computer. And what they've included on the side here is a headphone jack so you can actually plug headphones into this device as well the one thing it doesn't have is uh no no additional usb connectors on it so it's kind of a missed opportunity i think it'd be kind of cool if it actually had uh extra ports on the keyboard itself okay so let's plug this thing in and see what it, it's like so um i'm going to use the nice right angled usb-c adapter and because usb-c it goes into either direction uh, on the keyboard either this way or this way depending on your layout whichever you decide to do once you plug it in, Windows will actually make some chimes. It probably does one or two chimes to uh, find a, a different piece of hardware on the keyboard. Uh, it'll probably chime once for the touchscreen and then for the speaker that's built into here. Okay, so look at the options on the left side of the keyboard here. And we see on top here, there is a set of status lights. And they indicate what, what function has been chosen on this four directional and center button to control panel here. And these affect the touchscreen that's on the right. So if I hit the, the top, the touchscreen turns into a trackpad. And that, let's see if it goes, come on, there you go. That part lights up. And if you go to the number section here, this turns into a number pad and the third one lights up. You go down and nothing lights up, but it goes into media key, media key selections and then an on-screen calculator by going here. Now, these two options don't light up anything. Hit the home and it goes back to the default icon setup and that one lights up. And the second one here is actually a caps lock. So hit the caps lock, that lights up. All right, let's take a look at the, the functions a bit more closely here. I'm going to go to the, the touchpad function, which is kind of an interesting function. So you can see that the screen here turns into a touchpad. So if you notice on my screen, the cursor does move around, and it works okay. The one thing about the touch screen here, it is a single touch. It is not, not a dual, dual or multi-touch. So I can't say uh, bring up a browser and, and be able to to uh well i don't my internet's not plugged in right now but there's no scrolling option i can't do a two finger scroll and there's no uh two finger tap for like a right click so something that you might be familiar with like that it doesn't work here the bottom here here has uh, some buttons there's uh, you have your left click here and you have a right click here so this area here is set up so that you have that right click capability the one thing i found uh, odd about the touchpad that kind of hurts it i think is if i were to uh, bring up the uh, go here and bring up the calculator, for example, or well, I don't want to bring the browser up, bring the calculator up uh, here, is that uh, if I go back to mouse mode, 
the keys can can uh, the mouse actually can depress uh, easily. So uh, if it's some, it's, you can't tell if, as much on the screen. But if I would, were to kind of mouse around here, you see that uh, I'm, I'm the numbers are are tapping. Uh, it's a I don't know if it's it's an overly sensitivity thing where basically if I if I pick my finger up a little bit, it actually starts left clicking. So one of the problems if you like right click, like say over here right click. Uh, and you go to try to use an option, it goes away because it's detected a left click. And so sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So the, this, I think, is hopefully something they can fix via software. But right now, the, the, the trackpad is a limited function of banality because of the fact that um, it left clicks so easily. Uh, and, um, you know, and you have many accidental clicks like you saw with the calculator where um, I can just easily just move my finger around and I'm hitting, I'm hitting buttons. So that's an interesting problem. I hope they have, they resolve. That's something that I don't know if it's it just my unit, but that's kind of what I've seen here. All right. So other options here we can look at is the numeric keypad. So if I were to bring WordPad up again, ooh, if I can type WordPad, my goodness. Okay. If I bring WordPad up again, the, the numeric keypad works just fine. No issues there. Everything behaves like it really should be. So it's nice to have the numeric keypad here when, when in fact is a 10 keyless keyboard and if you need one this is available. Media keys so these are for if you're playing music uh, if you hit play pause or if I don't have any music running right now uh, but you can use it to control your music and that right here is also volume just like you have the volume on the home screen so that is also available here. And then of course this is the, the built in keyboard uh, calculator that's on the keyboard and this has no interaction with the screen whatsoever okay so let's talk about the first set of home options you have here you have my computer desktop browser email and volume control so if I hit my computer it brings up the my computer display on the screen here you get browser brings up the default browser you have set in windows email does the email client you have set up desktop shrinks it all down volume here well basically well like it says increase and decrease the volume based upon which one you select here. And then if you were to swipe to the left, uh, you get an area of six blanks and then left again, another six blanks. So you have potentially uh, 12 shortcuts you can add to the touch screen here. And if you swipe again to the right, you get to the last set of icons here, which is uh, search calculator, print screen, uh, software link, and the brightness control here. So hitting search, will bring up the Cortana search, or if you have your browser open, it'll use the browser search. Calculator will bring up the Windows calculator, and uh, which is different than obviously the calculator that's uh, on the screen here, so it's an additional option. Print screen actually takes a screenshot of the current uh, screen, so you can paste it into a paint program. Then if you were to choose software link, it tells you where to go to download the software, the icon sync software to basically program those shortcuts we just looked at. And then the brightness settings here are actually for the display here. So hitting the brightness on the downside, you see the screen starts to, dis to basically go dark. It never goes off, but it does get to the point where it's just you know very dim. And then same thing going the other way, direct other way, it goes brighter, 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 and you know, there's no, it doesn't really have any way of telling you uh, if you reached max brightness or min uh, brightness, but um, yeah, that's kind of what what it does. And so let's go take a look at the software for programming this and see what that's like. All right, so let's take a look at the Icon Sync software and how it affects the shortcuts you put on here. So uh, I have installed the software already. If I click on the Icon Sync program, it comes up, and you get this kind of simple little application. It's not, not a very big application, but what it does, it kind of shows the uh, the six empty areas, if you can kind of see behind the star background here, there's like kind of open and closed square brackets, and it shows that those are the ones you can put shortcuts in. Now, it's not quite as easy to use as you would expect. Like, for example, if I wanted to put the shortcut to Photoshop over here, you'd then be able to kind of open the start menu and drag this over, but it can't do it. You see, it's got the little X, can't do it. So, what you have to do is you kind of right click and go to more and open file location. And then you see the executable on here, or there's a shortcut for it here, and then you can drag it into here, and it will basically drop on, as it should anyway. Let's see. Let's try this again. There we go. I'll put it in the spot right there. So there we go. So now it adds a shortcut in. You see the screen blanks out, and it starts 
uh, uploading the shortcut. It does take a bit of uh, time to do so, and what's a bit of an annoying thing about it is that, that you have to, you can't put them all together and then send them all at once. It kind of once you put one in, it has to do it, and then kind of continues to going this way. And then once it's done, you'll see that there's a shortcut that appears right there. Um, so let's find something else that we can put on here. Let's see. Let's how about Steam? Now once again, I'll right click and more open file location to find that shortcut and then I can put this into the next spot here so if I can squeeze this over drag this over into the second spot here and there it goes now it's gonna do it again so once again it's it's a bit clunky the software definitely is not as nice as it could be um, hopefully there's something that can be easily resolved they spend a little bit more time on the software so it's a little more obvious and also if you notice the shortcut that was on there also had the Windows shortcut arrow so it doesn't have the um, you know, the, the regular background uh, or it just obscures the the uh, image so you see that there's a big white area behind it and you see the little window shortcut arrow it doesn't really look as nice so something that I think they, if they spend a little bit of time to make the software better uh, to get rid of that that would be really good uh, so let's find another one and put that in place how about uh, let's see hmm what's a good one over here let's put my well, let's just put my epic games launcher here so once again I'll right click on this and I will do more and with file location or actually let's do something more more uh, valuable let's how about the the uh, where's my office stuff I don't have my office stuff here oh sorry well uh, office is not here for some reason let's do wordpad let's just go and find wordpad open file location there it is and I'll drop wordpad onto the third spot right there and yeah sometimes I notice that some shortcuts don't work like like these one windows ones don't work so it's not it doesn't work for everything so that's kind of an interesting little problem like uh, some of the Windows ones don't really work and uh, executables like the programs like Steam and even like the Unreal or the uh, Epic Games Launcher will work just uh, things like the Windows shortcuts here don't and of course Windows Defender likes to annoy me but so once it goes through once again the screen blanks out and it should go get there in a second. Now below here is a page one, page two. So if you want to affect on the second page, you can do so. So if we were to, once this is done, go to page two. You know, we'll have a set of blank areas, and I can say, uh, like the, once again, these these ones will not work. Um, but if I were to right click the shortcut, open file location, and get the program itself, that should work. There we go. So that's what you're gonna have to do for those short Windows shortcuts that are shortcuts. You gotta be careful. Sometimes if it don't work, you have to find the executable program to put it on here. So it's a little not on the not not as intuitive side. And also the one thing you can't do with this is you can't program in like say uh, macro keys. Like say if you had a a nice little um, set of commands for say in Photoshop to resize, crop, and change the image uh, color and whatnot, you can't really program it. There's no programming method for it. So it's definitely on the very limited side. So once again, page one, I have those three shortcuts. And then page two, I have those. And once again, if I were to swipe here, you'll see I have those. Swipe those, I have those. And if you wanted to get rid of one, you can simply just delete it. Uh, so you can delete, click one and delete. And that gets rid of it. Deleting is actually much faster, at least. Uh, and you can have your shortcuts. And then if you want to see the shortcuts work, you can swipe over this way. And let's just launch, like, say, Photoshop. And you'll see that it launch, launches Photoshop. And you know, you'll get in and you'll be fine. So the, so the software, you know, at least you can have shortcuts. The software is definitely on the limited side right now. Uh, I'm sure they can do keyboard shortcuts only because you can see that uh, on the defaults here, there is a print screen. So I would imagine they must be able to do that. But right now the software does not let you do it. And of course now Adobe doesn't want me to sign in for some strange reason because they have any print problems all day. Uh, so that's a look at the software. Uh, and it, it's a list, it lets you at least customize some of the shortcuts here uh, and you know basically apply, have have your own um, like I said before it's got room for improvement hopefully that'll happen in the future all right so let's talk about typing experience so I have a close-up view of the keyboard here and I have WordPad running on my computer here so let's do some typing So typing experience is pretty nice feeling. Now, um, 
The one thing to consider is that these are scissor, scissor switches, and they uh, do, uh, they're do they pretty quiet. They don't make a lot of noise, so if you're in an office area with uh, neighbors, you won't be disturbing them with a clickety keyboard. Now, uh, the keyboard does look sort of like an Apple keyboard, but uh, one odd thing that took me a while to figure out what, what was uh, odd about it was basically the keys themselves have a little bit of flex, and they actually go a little bit below the body uh, housing of the keyboard. So you kind of see how it flexes a bit here. Uh, the keys kind of go pretty far down into the, uh, the recesses. And that's not for all the keys, but a good number of them do feel that way. And it's kind of weird. So if you if you hit the keys uh, not right on, I feel like, like the top edge or lower edge or a side, you kind of fall into that little groove that the key sits in. And it's, it feels kind of weird. Um, but it's not a showstopper and you don't lose any key presses. So the keys themselves, are pretty sensitive and you know, if I hit them off angle they do register so there's no problem there it just kind of feels a little weird when they go a bit further below the body of the, of the keyboard and that's not typical of what I normally deal with with keyboards I do use on a regular basis but aside from that I mean obviously feel is very subjective to everybody and so uh, I, I think the keyboard typing experience is just fine uh, no issues really there. Uh, key feels pretty, it's pretty decent. Um, about on par with any other uh, like laptop style keyboard that has low travel uh, that you would find out there. So once again, keyboard typing really shouldn't be any issue. It's quite responsive and it's low noise. So I think you'll be fine with this for if you're using it in an office setting. So let's do some other things like gaming. Okay, so I'm in Borderlands. Let's uh, give it a shot. I think I need there. have it a look at Volmoko's keyboard now this um, it, overall in general it's a pretty nice keyboard it has a few quirks that they need to work out luckily I think the quirks can be addressed with software in particular the icon link software for programming the screen here the shortcuts can, needs a bit of work but uh, that's something that's really addressable so they can make uh, future releases that address the uh, way the icons look as well as what other additional uh, options you can program in besides shortcuts um, you know, lots of options there available for it uh, to uh, deal with this and also uh, hopefully they can fix that uh, mouse uh, um, left click issue uh, when I tap down on it so hopefully it's just maybe a, a firmware update maybe we'll see uh, but in general keyboard wise functions pretty well it feels pretty decent to type on uh, it has the, the one issue where it kind of the keys kind of go down a little bit further and you kind of rub the edges if you're not uh, on spot um, it's not that big an issue but you know some people might have a problem with it the one thing I didn't talk about is the speakers the speaker here is a single speaker it's mon monochrome and um, it's um, not the greatest speaker in the world, but it's nice to have if you're hooking up to a system like mine over here where I actually don't have speakers, and so you get some sound coming out of here. So, all right, better than nothing. A headphone jack is pretty handy if you want to have that. Uh, and being USB-C is nice, it's forward thinking, but I think what they kind of missed on being USB-C also is that they didn't put a hub on here. So they put all these other things, but it would be nice to have like see an extra port for so either having a hub or just a mouse plugged into it. Uh, functionality here is okay. Uh, I kind of wish it was a, a jog, but you know, it's kind of what it is. So it's a pretty decent keyboard. Price-wise, it's not too bad compared to other keyboards that are 
single function. And this is actually a very multifunctional type of device. So there you have it, a look at Volmoco's um, uh, keyboard. And if you have any questions about this, feel free to leave a comment below. And as always, you know, like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.